it, it turns out that um, eye color is actually relatively simple in people. Okay, so here's what we figured out. We're going to look at um, we're going to look at Olivia, Olivia's family over here, and we're going to look at Natalie's family over here. All right, um, and. So this is where the pedigree chart comes in. And remember, I am showing you what I expect you to be able to do. So like, this, there's no question yet, but we're gonna have a conversation. I'm gonna have a conversation with Natalie and Olivia. That conversation is the kind of conversation you should be able to have with me too, and you should be able to do the stuff that I'm about to do. So we're gonna have, in each family, we're just gonna look at the two biological parents and the child, okay? So Olivia's family, we're gonna look at her biological mom and dad. Natalie's family, we're gonna look at her dad and mom. And, um, and these horizontal lines show that they reproduced and they had, they had these two kids, these are the only ones we're gonna consider. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at um, the, the trait we're going to be investigating is blue eyes, okay? And so with a pedigree chart, if it's fully shaded in, then an individual has that trait. So uh, Olivia, does your dad have blue eyes? No. Okay. Does your mom have blue eyes? Yes. Okay. Natalie, does your dad have blue eyes? Yeah. Does your mom have blue eyes? No. Okay. And then we're just going to look at um, uh, Olivia and Natalie here. So here's Olivia. Olivia, do you have blue eyes? No. Okay. Natalie, do you have blue eyes? Yeah. All right. And here's what we know about blue eyes. It is a recessive trait. And it's not sex linked, which means it's not on the X chromosome. So it's on one of the other 22 chromosomes, all right? So what I said is from this information, I can determine their, both their genotypes and their phenotypes for for all six of these individuals. I can tell you, I mean, we already know the phenotype, right? I can tell you the genotype for each of these individuals simply by knowing this information. Yeah? How do you know it's a recessive trait? That's a great question. The way that we know it's a recessive trait is by looking at, um, at these kinds of um, pedigree charts. That's how we know. That's the only way we know. How in this case? We couldn't know for sure just by, we could not infer from this that it's a recessive trait. You have to, you have, to have a little bit more information. We'd have to see more um, offspring and more, um, more um, marriages and matings. The way that you tell that something is a recessive trait, and, um, and AJ, this was your question actually. You said how is it that you can have two parents with one eye color and they have a kid with a different eye color? That you'd see if you had two parents that didn't show the trait, and the offspring that did. This wasn't either one of our examples, but what must be going on here is blue eyes must be a recessive trait. Each of these parents must have one blue eyed allele. If they had either one of them had two blue eyed alleles, they'd have blue eyes. If blue eyes were dominant, they would, but one or the other of these parents would have to have blue eyes. If this kid got the blue eyed allele from one of their parents and it's dominant, then one of their parents had the blue eyed allele, which means they would have to have blue eyes. So blue eyes can't be dominant, it must be recessive. That means this individual has to have two blue eyed alleles. That means each of these parents has to have one blue eyed allele. We can figure it out. I think the yeah. last one, it was hair. Hair, eye, eye color, and trinosy. Okay, trinosy. Yeah. Olivia? Um, is green like recessive too? Green eyes? Yeah, so 
this is we're we are we're skirting the edge of my knowledge. What I think is blue and green are recessive. Okay. But I'm not a thousand percent sure. How come in this case, like I have four siblings, two of us have brown, one of us have green, and one of us has like gray. How does that work with the blues and browns? Be, and that's a super good question. And the answer is there's more than two alleles. So there's blue and brown and black and gray and green and a whole bunch of other alleles and there's what we call, we're not gonna deal with this in this class, but one of the things that happens with this stuff is we have co-dominance and partial dominance. So that's where we have an allele that creates a protein that does something. That, and, and so that's a dominant allele. And if you have that, and you have another allele that does something, and they're both present, because we have pairs of alleles, then they both do something and you end up with a mix. And we can also have um, partial dominance. Partial dominance is where you have an allele that does something, but it's not, it's not like full power, right? Like it's, it's weak. And so then you have sort of a partial mixing. And, and so I don't know for eye color, I don't know the specific genetics for humans. I don't know how many, how many genes are involved. I don't know how many alleles are involved. And I don't know what the dominance ranking is. So we're, we're simplifying. We're pretending there's two alleles, one dominant and one recessive, and there's only one gene, to keep it simple. And that's, that's what we do with a lot of stuff in genetics. When we learned all this stuff by looking at traits that really were this simple, and now we know how to apply it to really complicated traits, but we need a lot more data than just this. All right, so I said I can figure out all the genotypes here, but actually um, I can't. Um, there's, there's one genotype that I can't figure out. I can't tell you for sure what? what Olivia's dad has for the alleles. Olivia's dad could be homozygous dominant, and he gave one of those dominant alleles to Olivia. Olivia's dad also might be heterozygous. Okay? And in fact, the fact that you have siblings that have lighter colored eyes tells me actually your dad is probably heterozygous. Man. Natalie, we know for sure, her mom has to be heterozygous. She got one recessive allele from her dad, but in order to have light blue, light colored bluish eyes, she needs two recessive alleles. So that other allele came from her mom. Okay. This one, we only know because we actually have more data. Right? We have another family member who has who has blue eyes, brother or sister. My brother. Okay. So we had we had this piece of information as well. So that allowed us to determine that that her dad has to be heterozygous. Now again, this is an oversimplification. So if we actually went back, if we did a genetic analysis, likely what we would find, and I'm guessing here because I don't know off, I don't know for sure, but likely what we would find is there's more than one gene for eye color, and I know there's more than one allele, and I know that there are patterns of co-dominance and weak dominance and stuff, so, so we, we, it's not gonna look just like this, but the logic works, the logic works. And what I want you to see here again is, first of all, the degree to which there were intelligent conversations happening. And second of all, the degree to which I was able to take one question from students about eye color and turn that into a discussion not only of pedigree charts, but of traits of dominant versus recessive, alleles and genes and, um, and genotype and phenotype. We didn't actually do Punnett squares, but we could. We could figure out what the, what the possible combinations, yeah, what the possible combinations look like for each of these families even this theoretical family, we could come up with all of it, we could essentially use this question to explore everything we've talked about in genetics, everything. We could use this to talk about meiosis, we could use this to talk about, um, about heredity, we could use this to talk about variation and, and all the things that we've brought up. So this is, this is a great question to think about. It's a really good question to think about. And again, what I would invite you to kind of picture in your head is to what degree could you put something like this together? I know that you're not 
to this point yet, but I'm guessing that many of you are pretty close. And um, the most important thing is, you know, given a more structured question, more structured set of information, could you A, show me what you know, and B, have an intelligent conversation with me about it? Those are the things that I'm going to be looking for. All right, I'll pause the video, and um, at this point, what I'm going to suggest that you do is, because um, I don't think we're going to have time.